We're going to deploy a Vita application using Firebase today. The goal is to get to this point where you have a running production application on the web. And of course, we need something to deploy. So I'll just make a really quick V application using the CLI. And I'll just call this Vite project. So that is the default name if you don't specify one yourself. So inside of this arbitrary directory called test, I now have a folder called Vite project. And if we go into Vite project, this is just a completely normal React application with TypeScript and Vite. And the behavior of the application is simply just to make a button that increments a counter. So inside of the Vite project, first of all, you need to install the dependencies. Once the package manager is done installing the dependencies, I'll now open up the package.json file. Inside of the package.json file, you will have a script up here called build. The build script requires the TypeScript compiler and Vite itself to build the application. And if you just run npm run build, it will now go through the entire process. So notice that it has now created these files here. And these files are inside of a folder called dist. So if we go into this folder, dist, and make an ls command, the index.html is considered the starting point of the application. And before we're gonna deploy this, you should test it locally. So go back to the project directory that you have here, and now we're going to use a command called preview in order to serve the application locally. If you take the package to JSON file, you'll see that the preview script here simply invokes Vite preview. You run npm run preview. Now you'll get the message that it's serving locally on port 4173. This is not the same as just using npm run diff, although it is still using localhost. So preview is using your production build, but it's just serving it locally. Uh, whereas npm run dev is used to making gradual continuous changes when you're in development. And when we open up the application, it looks like this. So we can conclude that it works locally. And now we want to take it to the cloud. Before we can actually do the deployment, we do need to install the Firebase CLI. And it's just a normal npm installation. And I want to do it globally because then you can access the CLI from anywhere. And it's just called Firebase Tools. So once the installation is complete, we're now ready to sign in using the Firebase CLI. So you just use the command Firebase login. If this is the first time you're doing this, it's just going to ask you a couple of questions. Uh, and now you can use this link to log in. For this step, uh, you do need a Google account, but chances are you probably already have one. And if you don't, it is free to get one. So now we need to initialize our project as being a Firebase project. And we need to do this from the project directory. So I named mine Vite project. So from in here, you will use the command Firebase init. And now it's going to ask you some questions. You just use the arrow keys to go up and down here. And now we need to pick the one called hosting. So for hosting here, you just press spacebar. And now it knows that this one is selected. And now you can use enter. Uh, you can choose an existing Firebase project if you happen to have made one. You can also make one inside of the browser. Uh, but if this is the first time you're doing this, just create a new project. And now you need to specify a unique ID. So if you just write something like test, chances are uh, someone already made that project. Uh, so you need at least uh, six characters. So I will just call this Uldale React Test. And uh, if you just press enter here, it's just going to default to the Uldale React Test as the name of the project. So after a little bit of waiting, uh, you now have initialized this as being a Firebase project. And you also have provisioned a Firebase project on the Google Cloud. Uh, that means that we are almost ready to deploy. Uh, it's going to ask you one last question here. And that is because we picked hosting as one of the services that we want. So here the question is, what do you want to use as the public directory? Recall that the folder was called dist. So we need to write dist here because that was our output directory. And uh, here, if you're using a, what we call a single page application, uh, you should say yes. For most modern frameworks, you actually want to write yes here. That, that means for Angular, it's a yes. 
or react it's a yes and i'm gonna say no to this and here's just gonna say you already have a file called this slash index.html and that's because we already built and tested our application locally so we don't want to override it so we'll say no to this if you do happen to want to change the public directory what you can do is you can just change the file that's called firebase.json so firebase.json here uh, simply just lists whatever configurations you made so this is currently the public directory it's named dist but if i want to change that to something else i can just change it inside of this file here so no harm done and you don't have to go back to the start if you do happen to answer yes to this one and it overrides your build you can always just build your application again using npm run build it should also be noted that the git ignore file that you have should also ignore the dist folder so just like you ignore the node modules you should also ignore the dist folder because it's just an output directory so now that we have the configuration set up and we have the application built there is one command that we need to actually trigger the deployment and that is firebase deploy and then two dashes and you can write only hosting here so because you have multiple services for firebase uh, but we're only interested in deploying the hosting uh, that's the command we're going to use here and the deployment is really fast and it will also give you the url for the application so here you have the uh, deployed react application so currently this is the url and the application does almost nothing but it is the same procedure even if you have a more complicated application something you probably do have to take care of at some point is separating the uh, base url for production and development so currently if you're just running locally and you have some kind of api that you're requesting data from maybe it's something like localhost or 3000 this is fine but then when you want to deploy it you need to switch it to something else so maybe you have some kind of https server that is deployed to the web you can go in and then you can flip it manually yourself every single time but that becomes tedious so we need to set up some kind of way to make this automatic the easiest way to do it is to create two different .env files so personally i have one called .env.development and one called .env.production and both of them they have a key which is vid underscore app it's very important that you actually start it with vid here it's not an arbitrary name and then i have a file here called api.cs and the api.cs only cares about referencing whatever value is inside either of these files here so currently the exact syntax that i'm using is import meta.env and then the name of the key here so there was vid app base api url and then i just make a, an exported const here called base url so let's say that i want to make some http requests i will always refer to the base url here and then i would maybe concatenate whatever else comes after the base url so if you're requesting users you go base url plus slash users and inside of the app.csx here i'm just printing out the current base url here so if we open up a terminal here and uh, i'm just gonna write npm run dev to show you really quick here that npm run dev currently it requests localhost port 3000 However, if you're running npm run build and you're now using the npm run preview, it will now use the production address here. So notice we don't change our source code. And that also means if I go ahead now and I run Firebase deploy only hosting, I will now use the current configuration for production and i open up the deployed version here to the web it will now say this app requests the api serving it and then the production address here but that was basically it thanks for watching and happy deployment